when my one of my best friends, his dad was a F-15 pilot. So he used to sneak us in to the alert facility and uh, we get to tour the jet and everything like that. I think that's probably when I was like, hey, you know, that's something I might want to do when I get older. But a lot of it was just, uh, I just loved watching my dad and was proud of him serving his country. And I just wanted to do the same thing. I wanted to be a part of that. My name is Lieutenant Colonel Mike Cole. I'm with the 731st Airlift Squadron out of Colorado Springs, Peterson Air Force Base. Uh, it's a C-130 unit, specializes in uh, cargo and personnel airdrop, as well as cargo airdrop. And we also have a specialty mission that includes firefighting, uh, usually supported um, with the Forest Service or CAL FIRE, or some of the agencies that help uh, contain forest fires throughout the United States. My grandfather was a P-51 pilot in World War II. I uh, had some other family in the Navy, and uh, and then my dad was Air Force as well. He was a logistics officer in the military, in the Air Force, and uh, had a love for flying, but he didn't have the vision for it, so he ended up just going into service country. I joined uh, in 1992. I was uh, just started ROTC, started um, trying to figure out the best way to get into pilot training. Uh, at the time, it was a little bit difficult. It was uh, one of those years when they weren't taking a lot of pilots. Um, candidates from ROTC. Uh, so I went in as an intelligence officer and I did uh, four years as an intelligence officer. And during that time, I would fly a uh, civilian and try and get my ratings and uh, was trying to increase my resume so that I could, you know, be more of a better candidate to uh, get selected for pilot training. It's a, kind of a hidden secret that the, the Guard and the Reserve um, have pilot slots as well. So there's other avenues to get into a cockpit besides going active duty. So while I was waiting for active duty to review my package, um, I started applying and interviewing with uh, Guard and Reserve units. And just so happened that my flight instructor was down in Colorado Springs and he introduced me to the right people and uh, went down there and interviewed. They have like a rush process where you just basically go and hang out at the squadron whenever you can, try and get to know everybody and uh, hopefully if they like you, they'll give you a job and send you to pilot training. And that's what happened for me. Uh, if you get active duty, they, your selection of the aircraft happens during training. Uh, if you get a, so a slot with a guard or reserve unit, you are tied to that one aircraft. So. Once I got hired at Colorado Springs, uh, I knew that I was gonna fly a C-130 from the day one of training um, and return back to Colorado. So in 1998, got the slot, 1999 went to training, came back in 2000 and been flying the C-130 ever since. September 11th, uh, 2001, um, we, we got orders uh, for December 2001 and initially we were told we were going to Afghanistan and then another unit um, decided that they wanted to go to Afghanistan as well. Uh, so they, they ended up replacing us, but they still needed people all over the world. So they ended up sending our unit to Germany to support the Bosnia operation while other units went forward to Afghanistan. I, I was one of the ones that was content where I was because I was new. Um, I kind of felt like my level of experience, I probably, um, I was probably better off getting my seasoning in somewhere a little bit less of a threatening environment. But um, we had a lot of guys who were um, very disappointed that we weren't the ones who were at the tip of the spear, so to speak. But um, that that kind of feeling, I think, came from most of the guys that were, were uh, veterans or you know very experienced pilots some of us new guys were just um we're just trying to learn the airplane for the first time so the thought of going into combat with such little of experience I, I think i was i think i was pretty content to go and support an operation that was also important but 
wasn't quite as uh, tip of the spear, so to speak. The Bosnia operation was, um, most of the conflict had subsided by the time I was there after 2001. It was a religious war, so to speak, where, you know, different uh, factions, uh, very confusing uh, who was on whose side. And they, uh, the entire um, country of Serbia and, and uh, Croatia and Bosnia, they were all, you know, involved in, in different levels of conflict. And we went in there to kind of try and make peace. They had peacekeepers in there. And we were trying to keep the war from escalating beyond what it already had become. We would support the peacekeeping operations by bringing in cargo and, and fuel and ammunition and that kind of stuff for the peacekeepers. And uh, sometimes that involved flying into airports where the bad guys didn't want us to be there. So sometimes, you know, they would take hot shots at us or whatnot. So it still wasn't a safe environment, but it wasn't quite, you know, we weren't in Afghanistan where, where things were really hot. When I was an intel officer, I got a chance to tour Sarajevo just after a lot of the conflict had ceased and got to see where a lot of the the, um, the death and destruction happened in Sarajevo. It sits in a bowl with mountains all around the outside. And the city at one point was under siege and they just launched incendiary rounds into the apartment complexes and people were just were burned alive in their apartments. And then they had snipers 24 seven that sat around the outside. They were kids essentially, given rifles and said, shoot anything that moves. You drive down the road and they had landmines, you know, that you could see placed in Sarajevo and the surrounding countryside that did a lot of damage to innocent people. So it was kind of uh, eye-opening to go to a place that at one point hosted the Olympics, and then you see a sniper's nest from the top of the bobsled run. Uh, it was kind of kind of surreal. It was an experience that I um, that I appreciated because it kind of because when you're airborne above above the fray, sometimes you're you're separated from it to the point where it's not as close to you because you have so much distance between your aircraft and what's going on on the ground. So I think uh, um, being able to see it from the ground level was eye-opening. And later on when I flew over Iraq or Afghanistan, I had probably a better understanding than most of the guys that haven't been on the ground on what kind of uh, personal struggles people who lived down there were going through. So I think that that probably helped me to um, appreciate it a little bit more of what people are going through that live in a combat zone.